So this phone comes in a solid metallic build, offers a 13 megapixel primary camera with an LED flash, a decent enough fingerprint sensor at the back, not to mention its dual SIM capabilities or the micro SD hybrid slot, but I'm sure you've never heard of it. Meet the X-Touch A3. The highlight of this phone is its price. This thing comes in at just over $80 or 299 dirhams, which puts it among the lowest end budget smartphone category. And for what you pay, you get a 1GHz quad core processor, a Mali T720 GPU, and 1GB of RAM. For these kind of specifications, you cannot expect the phone to fly, and performance over daily use has been average at best. There are hiccups here and there, and it's definitely not the smoothest when it comes to multitasking or browsing the web. But I think Xtouch have done a good job when it comes to software. They've used a lightweight fly launcher that brings considerable amount of bloatware, but at the same time keeps it very simple on top of Android 5.1 Lollipop. Not to mention it offers a very good level of customization, from changing scroll effects, changing wallpapers, changing widgets, to even having gesture support, which at this price point is a big deal. Now, over on the front, the display isn't a full HD panel. It's an HD or 720p panel, but I really found it hard to tell, and I enjoyed consuming media on it because of its 5-inch size. The sunlight legibility was also good, and viewing angles were decent as well, because the display, after all, is an IPS panel, but at times, I miss the contrast or the sharpness of, say, an AMOLED panel, but that's going a bit too far, especially at this price point. And the lack of hardware power isn't as noticeable when you're just using the phone for regular tasks. You can definitely see it when you're playing 2D games that have a slight bit of lag and 3D games requiring that extra bit of patience. But what else requires patience is the audio experience, which I felt to be below par with the speaker being very tinny. The speaker is also very easily covered when you're using the phone in landscape mode. And even when you place it on a flat surface, the sound is just a bit too muffled for my experience. On the bright side though, you do have the 3.5mm headphone jack as well as offline FM radio support, so good on that part X-Touch. Moving to the 13 megapixel camera I talked about before, it has a reasonable amount of detail but the colors are a bit faded and are just not that accurate. I was surprised with the amount of dynamic range the camera managed to capture but at the same time the shutter speed was very very slow. Nighttime shots were not that great, but it's definitely usable when you're standing still or when the object is standing still, but if you're trying to capture something in motion, say no to that. On the front side, the 5 megapixel camera has this sort of warping effect to it when moved, and the selfies weren't as great as I expected in the day or in the night, and when you're in motion, the selfies come out blurred 99% of the time. But again, for a 299 dirham smartphone, you cannot expect the camera to be top notch. Oh, and here's a sample of the video the camera can take. Here's what the X-Touch A3 can do in terms of video with electronic image stabilization turned on and me just on a very, very passive walk. The weather, of course, is a bonus. But what was top notch was its 2800 mAh cell. Standby times range from about one to four days and typically when I use the phone on a daily basis, I had to recharge it at mid-afternoon, and my usage included things like browsing the web, using social media, and watching videos on LTE, which this phone surprisingly supports. Recharging too is pretty fast, with you getting about a percentage every minute, but that drops down to maybe a percentage every 5 minutes, so you're looking at about 30% in maybe 45 minutes of charge. And while I'm at it with stats, screen on time is about 3.5 to 4 hours, so anyone who gets that? knows how well this phone performs. And with that being said, it brings me on to my conclusion. I think X-Touch have done a great job to make this phone a good choice for emerging markets or for anyone who's looking for the bare necessities of an Android smartphone at the budget price point. I think this could serve as a good second phone as well for those people who want multiple SIM cards to use. But at the same time, I don't think this would be a good choice if people who already own high-end smartphones were to switch to this phone as their primary choice because they would definitely miss all of the features that come with flagship level smartphones. But that's pretty much it for my thoughts and opinions on this phone. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and be sure to give this video a like rating if you enjoyed. 
And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the next one. Adios.